Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for, uh, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Hallowed Grounds fourth steward board roundtable. Um, we're, we're looking forward to this and, uh, and other people will be getting to more details about what this round table is about. But I just wanna say uh, very quickly that the three speakers that we have for tonight will be Barbara Barksdale, the president of the Pennsylvania Hallow Grounds, Stephen Berg and uh, Crystal Crampton. And I, as of right now, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Barbara. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Bertha. Um, again, good afternoon, good evening, early evening, and happy time change, folks. Uh, it's nice to see everybody uh, joining on our line. Uh, it looks like we have a nice amount of folks. Anyway, um, Steve, I'm going to ask you to, well, right now we have a, okay. It's going backwards, Steve. Okay, there you go. All right, there we go. All righty. So, uh, Steve, can you, is this your introduction part? I don't know. All right, let's go right there. Anyway, folks, um, as uh, Bertha said, I am Barbara Barksdale, and I am the chairperson of the Pennsylvania Hallow Grounds, and I also have my own little cemetery called Midland Cemetery here in, in the good old wonderful state of Pennsylvania out here in Swider Township. One of the things that we had talked about uh, as a group uh, some time ago is trying to do a statewide cleanup. So basically what we're doing is trying to get this organized so that we can have this statewide organized uh, cleanup uh, coming up in uh, April, the, uh, April the 22nd, which you may know it as Earth Day. And this Earth Day is something that is done not only here in Pennsylvania, but it's done around the country and actually around the world. And it is to try to make sure that the land is clean, that the environment's clean, and that um, <laughs> everything else is cleaned around here, you know, uh, picking up the trash, cutting some trees, uh, making sure that we're not having a lot of smog and everything else. So it's all about how to protect the earth. And so my part and our part as being cemetery stewards is what can we do within the cemetery to make sure that we do our best to um, add to Earth Day, but also to continue throughout the entire year uh, as far as making sure that the cemetery is preserved, uh, restored, protected, and how do we gather up all the history that goes along with that wonderful, beautiful cemetery? So I just wanted to get this out here about the uh, the Earth Day and hopefully once you're done with this here um, presentation that you will have something to take away, take back to your people and see what we can do, not only for Earth Day, but like I said, for um, the following months to come. All right, I think, you, I, uh, I think the PowerPoint has a mind of its own and keeps going back and forth. Okay, so <laughs> anyways. We're gonna start off with planning the day of service, all right? Day of service is getting out there and doing the hustle. And again, it doesn't matter if, if it is just for the Earth Day or it's because you got another cleanup coming, you're preparing yourself for Memorial Day, or you're trying to do something for even Veterans Day in the fall, or just because you just don't want those weeds and green, uh, trees overgrowing and, and being so chaotic over top of the hollow grounds, okay? so. As far as the uh, accomplishments, um, uh, the meaningful meaningful work, one of the things I wanted to point out is like, you know, what are your what are your needs? Um, do you need to have headstones repaired? Do you need to just do documentation of the cemetery? You know, are you out there trying to find? Uh, headstones, what is it that you need to have done within your cemetery? Uh, do you need to have even ground penetrating radar? Um, you need to sit back maybe as a group, as a community, uh, talk to your borough people and find out what the needs are to restore your cemetery. Some of the cemeteries are not as bad as others. Some of the cemeteries are very small. It's not even a block long or what you consider a block, not even the size of a shed <laughs> because it could be the size of maybe four or five people that's buried there. But then again, it could be a cemetery that has several thousand people buried in there. So you need to determine what your needs are and what your accomplishments should be in order to maintain your cemetery. One of the things on here, we have publicized your site's uh, existence and needs. Well, how do you do that? 
it, just like right now, we're doing a Zoom call. Do we need to do more media uh, outreach? How do you do that? Do you go to the newspapers? Do you have somebody write an article about you? Or maybe they're looking for you because they're hearing about your cemetery because you're talking about it, not only amongst yourselves, but maybe stuck it on, um, you know, the multimedia sites like Facebook or, um, I'm probably gonna say it wrong, Twitter, because um, I'm not the multimedia person. So I'm sure there's some of you like me that's like, oh God, is it, what's the other one? I wanna say squatters, but it's, it starts with an S. But you younger ones that's out there, you will know what it is like squiddle or, I know Steve, you just right on in there, you know what I'm talking about, you know? But um, anyway, you need to find out, um, what kind of media outlets do you have? I have even used my church or the churches within my town and uh, say, hey, look, can you put this in your bulletin board? You know, on your bulletin board, can you stick it in your announcements, you know, or something like that? Can you reach out to different organizations say, hey, you know, we're having this happening on uh, April the 22nd. So can you talk about it on your Facebook page or on your Twitter page or uh, whatever? is available out there that is mass media can you get it out there and connect it through all your different organizations that is the best why best way to get the information out there publicize as um i don't know if any of you have ever heard of charles bloxon from temple university one of the things that he told me something like 30 some years ago he says and this is coming from uh, martin luther king um or martin luther king through frederick Douglass. it was agitate agitate agitate. And that was the best way to keep it going. Agitate the heck out of your people around you because sooner or later they're either going to leave you alone or they're going to join up with you and join forces with you so that they can help. And you're agitating because you're saying you got to save this history. So come out there and do it with us and get that information out through any means possible. All right. And so you have to be able to build and strengthen your community support. Go and talk to them. Go and talk to your borough managers. Talk to the people that's at the, uh, the township uh, commissioners meetings. Go to your county commissioners and talk to them. Talk to anybody who will listen. If you're sitting on a bus, train, plane, or whatever, just start talking about the history and talking about your community because somebody in that group is going to be able to talk about it someplace else and say, hey, look, we got this black cemetery over here or we have this cemetery over here that has the United States colored troops buried in it. And sooner or later, somebody of that group is gonna come back to you and say, how can I help you? So start off with agitating and just go from there. All right, uh, defining manageable projects, type of work and steps needed to complete. Well, again, it's all about contact. Do you have a, um, a database? Do you have a group of people that's already in your email uh, listing? Do you have um, those connections I just spoke about? And can do they have an email listing? And say, write up, make up a flyer. Or if you can't make up a flyer because you're, you're uh, not really good with the computer, let somebody know to see if they can make up a flyer or just a standard announcement of your cemetery, the location of the cemetery, you know, what your needs are, and please show up on this day or that day and, you know, come and help us, all right? But you as the steward or the person in charge, or whatever title you want to give yourself, tell people to come and help you. And either it's by networking and you all know how to network because we have all gotten at least beyond high school level of age, you know? So we know how to do that and it's what we need to do to get the work done. So there's um, the, one of the questions that will come up from this, not only do you have uh, the types of works and steps that needs to be completed, but um, the variety of projects for the different uh, abilities. One of the things uh, I started off with is like, okay, well, we need to cut the grass. Now, who knows how to cut the grass? Anybody used to cutting the grass? You know, do you know how to use a lawn lawnmower? Or do I need to get you the old-fashioned push mower? You know, is your cemetery big enough for the push mower? Do you remember the old-fashioned push mowers that you had to use your energy behind? You didn't have, you didn't pull the plug and say, okay, you gotta have some gas in it or electricity to it. Yeah, you know those old types. So do you need just a couple of them or do you need a riding lawnmower? And if you don't have one, can you ask somebody in the community to bring a riding lawnmower? or that they would use, not that somebody else is going to use, but something that they will come in, bring the equipment, and also use the equipment at your, uh, your site. 
Do you need to have a tree removal? Do, um, reach out to the tree services that may be able to come in and just do it uh, free of charge. That's always a good option. And if you can't, maybe you can raise some money for that purpose. You know, uh, brush removal, even the repair of fencing, if you have fencing already there, is the fencing uh, wood or is it concrete? You know, is it brick? How is it put together? And what do you need to uh, put that, you know, the, the fencing back together again and fix it and make it right? You know, so, um, you just, you just start looking at different things that you need, like it's in your own backyard, uh, cutting the grass, throwing grass seeds down, things like that, you know. Um, and then also what is required. So for the labor, materials, and equipment. Um, okay, Hannah, okay. Uh, what do you need? We need to talk about labor, first of all labor is are your uh, volunteers okay so how do you want your uh, your volunteers to come in and believe me i'm going to share this with you okay because i've had to tell people i thank you for coming here to volunteer but i need you to go back home and put some clothes on because they have shown up with little short shorts and i said i got all kinds of people out here working and i don't want nobody to see the buttons so go and get yourself covered up and come back and believe me, they do. Also, I tell people, come in there and have some good shoes on. You know, not shoes, but there's, you know, like sneakers or um, steel toe sneakers, you know, depending on the equipment you're gonna work on. You know, I don't want you coming in there with fancy sandals, um, <laughs> stilettos or anything like that, or your Sunday go to meeting shoes. Come in there ready to work and get them dirty. Anything that you can't get dirty, and if I have to look at your kneecaps, I don't want you in there. I want you to cover it up down to the ankles. I want some long socks on you, some good sturdy shoes, and make sure you wear some gloves. Bring some gloves with you. That's good for the dirt, the soil, and everything else. And above all, have a, a first aid kit on hand, all right? Do they need knee pads because they're going to be down there cleaning the headstones? Will they need... Um, rakes and lawnmowers um do they need tree trimmers you know the ones with the long handles on it that they can reach up into the tree we don't want anybody going up there unless they are professional to cut down a tree so maybe they can do it from the ground with the long pole and it has the cutting blade on the top of, on the edge of it you know so who can use them we need to find out if there's anybody in the group that is accustomed to using that have they used it in their own yards you know, or it's something that you got to bring somebody in to teach them how to do it. Because um, working in your own yard can be dangerous. So imagine it being in a cemetery. So we need to make sure that the people are properly prepared and that they're ready to work when they come there with the right equipment, all down to goggles. If they're going to use a, a weed whacker, you don't want them out there without goggles. And they need to be aware that watch the people around them so that when they're using that weed whacker, whether it's string or metal, that is not being um, something that will create a projectile because of the stones that are within the grass that they don't see. And even with the riding lawnmowers, you need to be careful for things like that because that too can happen and it has happened to myself. I'm walking along and the riding lawnmower is going off and here comes something, bam, right up towards your face. So, you know, ducking and dodging if you see it, if you don't, you just get knocked out. So just be aware of these different things that people uh, can have in their, um, you know, problems within their cemeteries or things that people need to look out for. Um, as we go on to number three, uh, which is getting the word out, like I've already said, um, the mass media, I can't, I can't say it enough. And as you see on here, it's about the church bulletins. Church bulletins, you, you go to church, the AME churches, you go to a Presbyterian church, you, uh, the Catholic churches, wherever, just get the information out there the best way you can. Um, uh, hang them out at your pizza shop. And you know, if you have a flyer design or something that looks cute, that's gonna be an eye catcher, put them in the, uh, the pizza shops, in the Rite Aids, in the Walgreens, uh, anywhere that you would frequent, even at the barber shops, the beauty shops, get the word out there. Uh, get it out there amongst your friends and your supporters, the people that are in, um, just like, oh my, let's say um, your fraternities and sororities. 
their civic organizations, anything that will be a big help to you or even a little help. Sometimes the little help is much more rewarding than the big one. Uh, get that information out there. Uh, even the Masonic Lodge, I use them a lot around here. They've helped to do you know, different things at the cemetery and also for our memorial event. They come out and they help to organize things for us and they've done a tremendous bit of work. Now, almost every square inch of Pennsylvania has a Masonic brother somewhere. So take a moment and get that um, organization involved because it's all about saving their history because more than likely, you may have a Mason in that cemetery buried. So tell them that you have that person out there and maybe they should come out and help clean up that grave. Um, stick that information out there about the USCT or the Buffalo Soldiers or the Tuskegee Airmen and say, hey, come out and just do their graves if you can't do anything more. But you know, how can they do one grave without doing the one beside them, which could be the family member? you know, somebody within their own church organization, you know, that is buried there. It might be the founders of the church. You never know, but you have to, you know, work it the, you know, the best way you can to make the people come out and participate and want to have that longevity with your organization, even become a part of your organization, just like the NAACP. Not only are they an organization, but they can also come out and help because some of the founders of the NAACP um, in your own communities may still be those people who have family members there who are buried in your cemetery. And the list can go on and on and on. So I'm um, just kind of, I hope I'm not breezing through too fast where I talk fast and it's very normal for me, but uh, and just in case you didn't get it all, this is being recorded by the wonderful uh, Dr. Stevenberg, and he will make sure that it gets out there with he and Jeannie later on so that you can do, a, um, a, a, as they say, a repeat performance. All righty. So, and we're going to have a Q&A at the end. So just in case you miss something or don't understand something, we're going to relax at the end so you can get your questions in if I'm not answering them as we are going through this. All righty. So, um, whew, number four, number four. So on the day of the event, what do you want to do? All right. And that is, as it says here, warm and welcoming, name tags, food and water. Well, name tags, food and water. You want to, when the people show up, you want to be there before they come. You don't want to be coming up and saying, oh, oh, I'm so sorry I ran late. No, 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 no. You know, everybody knows if you show up at nine o'clock when you're supposed to start at nine o'clock, you're already late. So be there at least five minutes till. And in fact, be there 20 minutes up so you can set up and be ready to greet your people, your volunteers, because the worst thing you can be is unorganized. Have your table set up, you know, your little card table set up and have it covered up, of course, because you don't want to get it all dirty. Have your name tags laid out there so people can fill them out with an ink pen. And also make sure that they have other information available that you can pick up. Maybe it's a flyer about your cemetery. Maybe it's a little bit more explanation. Maybe it is about what those jobs are going to be done, you know, that we need to have done in the cemetery, the assignment sheets and stuff like that. But you want to make sure that you're able to welcome them, have a smile on your face, have some energy in your, your step, you know, get some pep in your step, even if it's a cold, uh, yucky morning. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, I don't want to be here. But you don't need to let them know that. You just need to let them know that you appreciate them even showing up at that hour in, in this weather, uh, whatever it may be on that particular day. And you are going to do whatever you can to keep them happy so they can make you happy. All right. So have some snacks available. You know, you can go to Dunkin' Donuts and get some old, uh, you know, not old, but some, get some donuts, uh, some donut holes and whatever like that. Uh, have something for hand washing because uh, around here we have toys and ivy. So have something for hand washing and also some soap ready because you need a little bit of soap. I'm not talking about the um, what is that that we're using now? Hand sanitizer. As you know, hand sanitizer only kills the germs. It does not remove the dirt. Have you ever wiped your hands or washed your hands after you use hand sanitizer? You're still peeling off the dirt. So use some good old soap and water. Have some paper towels on hand. Have all those things ready on your table that has been set up over in the corner where the people can sign in. And when they sign in, make sure that they're signing in with their name, um, if there's an organization that they're representing, 
also have them sign in with their um, email address, their phone number, anything so that you can contact them again so that you can get their information and put it into your database that you only had five emails to begin with. Now you got 20. Hallelujah, right? So <laughs> that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you're adding to uh, your database of people so that you can reach out to them so they can reach out to more people for you. All right. Now, one of the things that we have listed on here is about liability with waiver of liability. And all I can suggest is that uh, you maybe reach out to a nonprofit organization that has uh, an attorney or maybe have an attorney that you know of, and they can give you some information on waivers of liability to have that signed. The reason why uh, I wanted to make sure that you learned about it is because you never know. Somebody's going to walk around and say, oh, I didn't know you had poison ivy. Well, we do have poison ivy. Do you want them to um, not wash their hands with soap and water and, and they end up wiping, you know, the side, the sweat off their face and then they end up with poison ivy? Or did they uh, step in a groundhog hole and hurt their leg, get stung by a bee? You know, it's basically saying you're entering at your own risk. And we still enjoy your, your time helping us, but uh, you may not have the funds or the insurance or whatever to cover them and let them know that uh, from the start that this you're a volunteer, the organization is all about volunteering, it's nonprofit and you know what you have available for them and what you don't. Uh, is it's up to you, your attorneys or your guiders who is going to be able to give you more information. It's just one of those things we wanted um, to put onto your mind so that you can reach out in the future concerning your liable um, actions with people who may have uh, a boo-boo and hopefully and prayfully no one will have that particular problem and then um in fact i would like you to actually do the introduction of your site and why it matters before you actually talk about the liability because you want to get people um happy about learning about their cemetery so when you get there and you have your table all set up and you're moving to the next level of introduction is introducing your site. Now you have this wonderful, beautiful cemetery that's full of wonderful, rich history. And should you tell the people when it started? Yes. When, how long ago did the cemetery start? Was it in the 1700s? Was it in the 1800s? Do you have a precise date? Do you know if it was connected to a particular church or just an organization like the Masons or the Elks? or maybe all three, like in some cases. Um, talk about some of the people. Can you pick out a couple of people that's buried in the cemetery and introduce them? Uh, and I'm talking about somebody who is deceased and introduce them to you, you know, to your audience so that they could say, oh man, over here in this corner, there's a United States color troop, you know? And talk to them about the Civil War. Just, you know, just a couple of little blurbs about it because you want to, let them understand the value of the history that you're trying to clean up and why it really matters. It matters because we have those USCT, we have those Buffalo soldiers who was part of the Western campaign. We have those people who was in, um, you know, the Spanish American war. My God, they're over there in the corner. They're over there under all that grass and that thicket over there. Should we go over there and clean them up? Oh yes, I need you, John and Mary to go over there and take care of those people over there in that corner. So introduce those people that are in those hollow grounds. You don't have to give them the whole scenario. You can tell them that there's a website or you can give them a, a link to uh, information on the USCT or World War I or II or Korean War, whatever it is. And let them, you know, look for it. Have these things written down on your introduction papers that you might want to hand out prior to or even after you're done with your cleanup for the entire day. So there's all kinds of ways of getting this information, trying to get them, you know, involved mentally and physically so that the cemetery will be continued to be cleaned up, not just for that one day, but on and on and on. So the whole thing is we're going to restore the site. We're going to preserve the site. And at the same time that you're doing this, you're also educating them about the site. So all these things kind of go hand in hand or hand in dirt, <laughs> trying to get it cleaned up to make sure that um, you do the best you can to get your volunteers interested and also see how it can reach out into the community 
And I say it like that because we want to make sure that the community, not just the people in your area, in your block, but also the people down the road and around the corner, we want to get that community involved. And you also really want to get those young people involved the local schools involved, the history teachers, the art teachers, the uh, English teachers, you know, your math and science teachers. You want to get all them involved too, because right in their backyard, my God, they have this beautiful cemetery that has all these things. So go to the school board and say, hey, look, bring them over and let us give them a tour and help them, let them learn how to take care of a cemetery. Maybe legally you don't want to have a child in the cemetery that's going to do any work because, you know, use your common sense. You don't want anybody who can't drive a car to handle something like a riding lawnmower, okay? You don't want to do that because a child will be down there thinking it's a little Zoom Zoom machine. No, you want to have somebody. You can give them their little push lawnmower, not the one that's going to run over toes, you know, but you can also, it all depends on your age group and their maturity. Uh, and also, if you're going to have children out there, Make sure their parents are with them. Make sure that these assignments are given to the parents more so than to the kid, uh, because you don't want to take the liability of any child out there without a parent. But if the child is coming with the school, they're not there to do work. They're only there to get the history lessons. So there's a big difference, okay? So you'll, you'll have to figure it out, you know, what makes sense to you. Um, as we go on, um, to number seven here, identify the dangers and uh, emphasize safety. Of course, I, I spoke earlier about the uh, poison ivy, <laughs> the groundhog holes, you know, walk around before people get there and make sure that you know what the problems are. If you see that there's a tree leaning, then say, oh, uh, don't say timber, say get out the way. Don't even go near it, you know? Um, and also falling headstones. Some headstones that are tall uh, have been known to crush uh, fingers and toes and kill people. So uh, be careful and, and know what is out there in, in your cemetery. And also, if you have cemeteries that are flat, they have fallen down, be careful when you go to pull them up because you don't know what's under them. I have found in my own cemetery, when we go to lift up a, a headstone, it doesn't have to be a big one, but there's something up under that thing that I always like drop the headstone. Well, I don't drop it, break it, but I, I let it fall back down because there's a snake up under there and I'm not good with that kind of thing. So, you know, be aware of these things that could be in your area. The different parts of Pennsylvania holds different parts of different types of animals and critters, okay? So just know what's in your neck of the woods and when they usually come out, a hibernation or you know, uh, coming out because the uh, poison ivy is coming out and, and things like that. But also make sure that you have a first aid kit. I mean, people may get a splinter in their finger. Or they may get, you know, a little cut or a boo-boo of some sort. So make sure you have something that you can at least put some antiseptic on it and, and you know, guide them to their uh, place to be seated and, and get some water and just relax a moment. Um, but one of the things um, as far as um, the safety part of it, make sure that you have already spoken to your townships, your boroughs or wherever that you're at, wherever your cemetery may be. And uh, make sure that you've talked to your officials, all right? Why am I seeing this? I got a sidebar here, I got a side slide and it's just throwing me off here. But anyway, um, make sure that you've talked to your, your officials in the area so that they know what you're doing because then they can send you some, hope, some help and um, try to get you the needed medic teams that you might have. They'll also maybe have even a, a an ambulance or a medical team somewhere around close by in case you need that for whatever reason. Uh, make sure that you have alerted your police department if you can, because they like to come out and help. And make sure that you, if your, your cemetery is close to the road that they are aware, the police department especially, so that they can maybe be there to help slow the traffic down if you have a lot of volunteers and they need a place to park or they need to uh, be able to um, 
guide people to where they need to park, you know, or maybe it's a one way street and some people don't know that because they're not from the area. So you maybe that's a possibility of just connecting with the officials in your area. Alrighty, um, volunteers and place. Is, um, Steve, is there something wrong with the slide? Because I'm seeing two slides at the same time here. Uh, anyway, have your volunteers work in pairs or groups? And I say that only because when you're washing, you know, doing a headstone, you might need somebody just to hold it in place so that you can, you know, somebody can gently scrub the, the uh, headstone down. Steve is gonna be getting into that later. But I say work in pairs so that, first of all, you got somebody to talk to as they're walking along. And if they're uh, painting fencing or uh, fixing a, um, a border around a headstone or a plot of some sort that they have somebody that they can interact with, you know, not only because they, it's good for company. It's good for your chatter. And it's, you know, they can talk about maybe the person that is buried there in those hallowed grounds so that uh, it makes the day go better and it makes it a little bit more fun. And they're not dead serious about why they're there. You know, it, it just makes it so much better. If you're going to have groups or if you have just a pairs or you have just one or two people, take the time to talk to them about safety, talk to them about, um, the instructions of what you want them to do. Again, Steve is gonna talk about the hair, headstones, but if there's like weed whacking or uh, painting of um, the fencing or repairing of fix, fencing, or even just you know putting down seeds and um, hay or whatever that you put over top of the seeds so the animals don't eat them all up, make sure that the people understand exactly why they need to do it and where they need to do it within the cemetery because there's so much that can be done. And again, watch out for the age groups. If there's children coming up there, make sure that their parents are the ones who are signing up and that they have already been told that the children should not be doing certain things within your cemetery. You might wanna give them a little rake to remove some of the old fall foliage, you know, uh, keep them busy, keep them happy, but, um, and keep them active, but also have them do the little uh, treasure hunt, uh, scavenger hunt you know, while the parents are with them. So it gets them interactive and start them to learn um, from day one, from the moment that they're up there. And make sure that you are giving clear instructions and, and time with all of your volunteers. Sometimes you can just walk off to the one that's down at the corner and talk to them for a moment while they're working or just have them stop for a moment. Maybe they need to hydrate, take a bottle of water with you and give it to them. Uh, say, hey, look, you're looking like you're a little you know, thirsty here. Take a bottle, take a couple of swigs for me. And so I know that you're okay and that you're staying hydrated. It's one of those wonderful things. But make sure that um, you, you as the steward or the person in charge, that you are enjoying the, the volunteers, that you are staying alert and watching it all around, even though you may be busy, don't be so busy that you can't see what your volunteers are doing, all right, and where they are, especially with the larger cemeteries. Maybe you just wanna do certain quadrant of the cemetery and just keep everybody in that area so you can keep an eye on them because you, if there's a problem, then you need to be able to address it right away. You just don't walk away and sit down and say, okay, well, they got this, or you don't get caught up in your own work that you can't see what the volunteers are doing. And sometimes I have had to, you know, try to move fast to some of my, my volunteers and say, oh, no, don't do that, you know, because it, it's dangerous or it is something that will cause injury to the headstones, like weed whacking. You don't want to weed whack too close to a headstone because they can rip into uh, the bottom of the headstones and, and cause all kinds of um, dents and indentations along the um, the the bottom of the, the base, all right? And make time to let them know that you appreciate their work, that, hey, you're doing a great job, you know? Um, you know, I see that you're really getting the headstones right or the grass is looking good or, you know, you got that cut down nicely, just don't go any further, <laughs> you know, because you don't want to dig up dirt. And uh, if you find any kind of things that's laying around in the cemetery, don't move them, don't push them around, don't throw them into the woods, uh, but just be there to talk to them and keep them uh, apprised of what needs to be done. And again, 
interaction, 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 agitate, 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 and let them know. And if you know where the, that volunteer is working at, you know, with those instructions, take a moment to say, hey, look at this headstone and read this headstone. And what is it saying to you? You know, oh, we're over here by Rap Dixon. Uh, Rap Dixon was a Negro League baseball player. Oh my God, did you ever read about this person? You know, well, this is something you can tell them or, you know, the students go back and learn about that Negro League baseball player or the players. You know, again, it is the restoration, preservation, and definitely about the education. So it's all those wonderful things that you can do. And then at the very end, when you're all said and done, you can go back as yourself, your stewards, and uh, document what you've done. Take lots of pictures of your volunteers. Make sure that they're posted somewhere or shared somewhere. I'm not really good at posting a whole lot myself because I don't really care for all that, but at least let them know that they are totally, totally appreciated. So with that being said, and I can talk all night, but I'm going to stop and I'm going to hand this over to, is it going to be Crystal? Nope, this nope, is, this is it's going to be Steve. To it's going to be yeah. Steve. All right, Steve. Well, Dr. Berg, I'm going to let you have it. And um, at the very end, if anybody has questions, either put them in your chat or, um, you know, Steve will let you know when you can holler them out. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, so one of the things that um, a lot of folks will do um, for their cemetery cleanups um, may be cleaning headstones. And so we wanted to just take a couple of moments to um, give a few tips about how to do this well, and also things to avoid if you are doing the work of cleaning headstones. Um, first thing we just wanted to stress is that um, the, the headstones, the tombstones and the cemeteries, they are historic objects, they are artifacts, they are important in and of themselves. And so one of the things that whatever you do, you want to really be thinking about um, how do you protect that and hopefully uh, allow it to exist um, far into the future. So um, in general, you want to try to do as little as you can um, to keep it safe, to keep it clean, um, but to also not do any damage while you're um, trying to preserve it. Um, one of the things that I would just stress is if you are going to do um, cleaning of headstones, um, make sure you take the time before volunteers get there to go and check to make sure that the stones that they're going to be working on are safe and that they're stable. Um, because the tombstones, especially upright ones, um, can weigh a couple of hundred pounds. And so the, the thing you absolutely do not want is to have somebody working on a tombstone that's unstable or that may come become detached and have two or 300 pound stone um, fall on them. So take the time, literally walk through the cemetery, put your hands on the tombstones, see if they're stable and make sure that if there are ones that are unstable, that you direct folks away from those. Um, when you're actually doing the cleaning, one of the things that you wanna to try to do is um, use tools that are not going to cause any harm to the stone. Um, marble is very soft, um, granite is, you can scratch, um, sandstones you can scratch. So you really want to use brushes that are um, soft. Um, generally, the rule that people in the, the field talk about is if it's a brush that you would feel comfortable washing the hood of your car, then it's a brush that you can use in your, your cemetery. Um, and you'll also want probably different size brushes. You might want some toothbrushes, some little scrub brushes, um, bigger brushes. Um, in general, you're going to want to use a lot of water. And in terms of um, what you mix into the water, the, the substance that I would say most people who I know who do this work tend to like to use what's called D2. Um, it's a pro product that is uh, what's called a biocide. So it's actually one of the things that's um, causing discoloration on tombstones tends to be lichen. And so what the D2 does is actually kills the lichen, um, as well as your, your scrubbing will remove, remove dirt and other grime. Um, you can also use things like wooden tongue depressors or bamboo skewers um, to get into some of the nooks and crannies. Um, but it's really important that I've seen on the internet people recommending all kinds of stuff which you simply do not 
want to be using, um, detergents, cleaners, degreasers, bleaches, acids, other harsh chemicals, um, because the stone itself um, has a, a composition, it has materials in it that hold it together. And if you use something harsh, it may clean the surface temporarily, but you might be undermining the integrity of the stone and causing long-term damage. The other thing is you really want to be careful with the tools that you're using. Um, you want to avoid tools that are metal, uh, metal brushes, uh, power sanders, sandblasters, steel wool, sandpaper. I've seen a lot of tombstones where people have gone through with sandblasters and the tombstones look clean, but you've wiped off the surface of the stone. And over time, too much cleaning can actually start to um, remove the surface of the stone, especially older, the, the tombstones that are on a lot of USCT graves, uh, marble. Um, you can actually, each time you clean it, you're removing a little bit of the surface of the stone. So you want to be gentle and you really don't want to over clean the stones. Um, and really, because what you can end up doing is making it uh, more likely that they'll deteriorate rather than um, preserving the stone. Um, one of the things that I wanted to recommend is there's a video. Um, we've got a link to this on the Pennsylvania Hallowed Grounds website in our preservation toolkit. Um, when we stop the presentation, I'll drop it into the um, chat as well. Um, the National Center for Preservation Technology and Training has a uh, five minute video called Basic Cleaning of Monuments, which is excellent. And if you're going to be cleaning it, I recommend everybody to watch this. And I'd also, um, if you have the opportunity, it wouldn't be a bad thing to have volunteers watch. Um, it really emphasizes safety. It emphasizes being as gentle as possible, using a lot of water, um, both wetting down tombstones before you get started. So any cleaners you use just stay on the surface and then using a lot of water um, to clean the, the cleaners off. Um, one of the amazing things for those of you who have used D2 um, to clean tombstones is it keeps cleaning after you stop. So um, you'll often walk away and come back in a week and the tombstones look even brighter and cleaner than when you had left them. Crystal, I'm going to turn things over to you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Steve and Barbara. My job is a little bit easier tonight. Um, when you're in your cemetery, the wrapping up of the day, at the end, get your people together, whether in groups or when, when you have them in groups, make sure everyone is together. Say your name, say where you're from. Because when people are working, you just maybe hear the first name. You want to get to know the people. Because after you do the first cleanup, you want them to come back. You want everyone to be, to feel like they are a part of it, which they are. But sometimes, you know, you get busy and we don't get to say anything. So I kind of do a meet and greet when I'm in my cemetery. And what it is, is I just have everyone say their name, why they came, um, what interest do they have, and how did they hear about the cemetery? Because there's many other cemeteries other than the one I take care of, which is Bucktail. Barbara has Midland, uh, Bertha has hers. Everyone has one um, and we call them our babies. When you're taking photos, you can do a release form with people's names, addresses and phone numbers. But the best thing also to do is Barbara put in the chat is ask everyone to take pictures and then to share them with you. And that way um, everyone sees what went on through the day because so, there might be someone on one side of the cemetery who doesn't get to see the front side. Also, you know, don't forget to say thank you. It's two small little words, but it means so, so much um, because this is, you're volunteering. So, you know, we're, we're, we don't get paid for this. I mean, we get paid in because we love to do what we do, but they're volunteering and you just want to let them know that they are appreciated. You do, you know, you do appreciate their time and their effort. We can't do it by ourselves. We try, believe me, we really try. Um, also, um, in our emails and social media, you want to put it out, as, as, as Barbara said, all social media. I don't know of anybody else, but I still use newspapers also. So um, they have the penny flyer. Anybody that will listen to your story, let them know. 
Um, certain bureaus have their little papers, put it in there also. If you're having a cleanup day, other than this Earth Day that we have coming up, you want to put it in that. You, like Barbara says, you want to use people's bulletin boards, whether it be church, auxiliaries. You want to get the word out. Use libraries. A lot of people use the libraries. Social media now, you have, um, uh, what is it? I don't even know because I don't, I really don't do social media. I have someone that does that for me. But like, what is it? Uh, your Facebook page, you post it. Uh, those types of things, that's where you can get everything out and let people know about your day. Let them know just not only about your day, but what's coming up. You might have an event that's coming up, whether it be a flag ceremony or a memorial. You just want to get everything out there to people and don't assume that they know. You know, the best way is tell a friend, tell someone, get on the phone. That gossip train, you can get it out there and let them know also. Also, when you're out at your cemetery and you have everyone together, as Barbara said, you want to make sure they're hydrated. You have some snacks, whether it be fruit or um, crackers or anything like that. Reflect on the day. How did it go for everyone? How did it go for the person who put it all together? You know, you want to sit there and you want to make things better than when you found them. You want to make sure that your day is successful for everyone. <laughs> Just don't assume asked everyone say so how did you feel you know if someone's saying oh it was okay well what's okay about it you know you want to sit there and say how can we do this better because it's, mm -hmm. everyone's ideals are important I say with Bucktail your life matters within that dash so when you're volunteering your life matters in that dash give your 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 suggestions your opinions they help us as we go along um as we're also saying, put your comments in your, I think Barbara has answered most of the ones that are in the chat. Um, let me see here, sorry. So we have, it says, what questions, tips and suggestions do you have for those preparing to hold a cemetery cleanup day of service? Well, for me, I, if people that know me, I like free. I will ask, Wah, wah, listen, I have an event coming up. What can you help me with? Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, the American Legion, the VFWs. Everyone loves a day of service. And um, you can go to schools, whether it be, um, you know, you have to be careful, as we said before, with the ages, because you might have, you don't want to give a 12 year old something that's movable, that has sharp edges. So anybody that's 18 and older, like she said, can drive a car, can use these materials. But there's things like rakes, there's gloves that you can bag things. <clears throat> so go to these schools and seniors and juniors, and even I think some sophomores, they need credit. So when you have these volunteers days, they can help you and you can help them. You just sign their little paper saying, hey, mm -hmm. they spent this many hours with you. So, you know, it the your thoughts are endless. So we just wanted to let you know, just give you guys a couple of suggestions that can help you along the way. And I think now I'm passing it on to Bertha. Okay, yes. Beautiful, wonderful presentation all three of you. Uh, important things and as always, I'm always learning something. So you see me taking notes, uh, important things. I suggest that we go back to the chat because I was just looking at it and uh, there, were, there were some questions and um, some of them were already answered, but some of them I'm not sure if they were. So can we just do a, a quick review of what was in the chat in case somebody sure. may not have seen it? Sure, I believe also Jeannie might have questions that yes. came in prior to our, our day? Yes, thank you. Jeannie? Okay, I think that most, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I think that um, most of our questions may have been answered uh, from previously, um, but perhaps we, might answer the question of how to keep a cleanup sustainable. <clears throat> I 
Okay, Jeannie, uh, that came in from um, Harriet Gaston. Harriet, Harriet yes. Gaston. Okay. And as far as uh, clean and sustainable, Harriet, are in, I know you're online here, so just chime one in if I'm not addressing it properly. Um, you're referring to after the cleanup has been done on whatever day that you're having your volunteers out there. Uh, are you talking about ongoing? Um, yes. Um, the the uh, cemetery that I'm looking at is not owned by anybody. And okay. there have been several attempts, at least once every decade, to clean it up and then it just drops. Um, so that's... That's been the issue for this particular cemetery, uh, this historical cemetery, is that once the families that created it left the, the community, there was nothing in place to keep it going. Okay, so you don't know who owns the cemetery? At this point, no. And it's not uh, taken care of by the, um, the, the town or borough or city no. that it's within? And no. have you been in contact with anybody there? With the city? And, yeah, city, town, wherever it's located. Um, usually they're contacting me <laughs> about the who owns the cemetery. Where so, is the cemetery? The, um, I'm from Altoona, Pennsylvania. The cemetery is called Eastern Light Cemetery. Um, it houses United States Colored Troops, soldiers, it houses um, um, formerly enslaved people and other histor Black historical residents. Um, it was founded in 1864 or 1865 by at least four men, four or six men. And then the, the, as far as I can tell, the last person who, who founded it died in 1893. And, and people continue to be buried in it. Okay. Uh, up until uh, until 1940s, um, but there was nothing in the as association that was created for the cemetery mm -hmm. to who are the heirs. Um, the last person I, I said who died, he had no ch no more children. Uh, they had died before him, so there was nothing to for him to to give it to. Um, so it's just been an an issue of of what do we do with this historical cemetery that at this point, there's no paperwork on who owns it? Right. And do you have the, the deed to who did own it, the person that died without any descendants? Um, no, I've not been able to find that deed. I can check with some other historical societies um, and genealogical societies on the deeds. But mm -hmm. um, as far as I can tell, there is nothing that was put in place as to who takes it over. Yeah, okay. Well, as far as trying to keep it going, uh, like I had mentioned earlier, and that is to, of course, you know, try to get as many organizations involved to come out there and select a day. And as Samantha just said about preservation of the day, as far as uh, using it for preservation, as opposed to using the terminology of cleanup, uh, so that maybe that would be something that uh, would be, uh, a catcher for the people to come out and, and continue with the work and possibly do you have a board um, for your organization or is it 501c3 what is it well I'm working with the uh, local NAACP for, okay. for right now um, and there was a question about a state marker that's not been done there was no money set aside to mm -hmm. just to do document it and then purchase the historical marker. That, from what my understanding, that's quite a cost. So, well, they, they kind of changed that recently over the last year. But um, at this point, you're you need to make sure that you're you have it organized enough that it is with a group that somebody is going to continue with the care of it and the preservation of it. You know, so I would would. Definitely, the people that's contacting you, like you're, uh, you're saying that they're calling you to find out who's cleaning it up. Maybe you need to take it back to them and see when they're, they're going to clean it up, you know. And if they have the equipment and the time to come out, maybe they can have it under their parks and recreation, you know, because then the cost will come out there, and you would just basically be the steward to help make sure that these things are happening for it. 
It's a possibility. I mean, you know, I'm just throwing things out there that might be of help. I don't say that they will help, but they might be of help. Um, I, I like the idea. The The issue typically is money. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yep. there are other cemeteries that also contain Black people, uh, as well as white, where the issue, again, is continuation. Mm -hmm. Whoever was in charge of it moved on. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about uh, Veterans Affairs? Anything like that? Your, your local one, I'm talking about the local one. Uh, I, we can check with them. Okay, all right. We got all kinds of ideas and that's what this thing is all, you know, our day is about, this hour is about, and that is trying to share the ideas that may work in your area. They may not work in other people's areas. So we can only just talk about it and try to share as much as possible. But Harriet, keep in touch with me and um, let's see what we can do, okay? Thank you. Appreciate right. And Steve, we have that uh, cemetery on our list. Yeah, no, absolutely. And okay. it's, um, Harriet, I, I also know that um, Ms. Gaston, you you had applied for the earlier round of grants that we had um, that we there's a second round of grants that are now have more money attached to them um, that are from the, the National Trust. And so for the kinds of, you know, both restoration work or planning or um, even legal research to try to establish ownership. Um, those are all things that could be potentially um, covered. So if it is possible, it may be uh, worthwhile to apply um, for this round of grant funding. And can't guarantee anything, but it would. It sounds like there's a lot of need there. Uh, thank you. I did receive that email. So I, I will be looking um, at putting in a request and thank you again for all the other organizations we can reach out to because I think that's going to be helpful. Uh, Steve, before we go, can you put the uh, the link in there for the people yep. to grab for the uh, the grant or yep. um, all the grants? You know, get them in there so then they can um, download or upload or whatever the little <laughs> word is and, and get the information out there for them. Yep, I'm just so that. happy that there's so many people signing on or have signed on and hopefully uh, the information that we have been able to share today is even, even if it's just like one sentence out of the entire hour that it's been useful for, for you. Okay, the people that had uh, put earlier questions in, Susan Anderson, Lenore Catrone, if I messed your name up, I'm so sorry, Harriet, <laughs> Karen Lewis and Hannah Wallace. Did we answer your questions throughout our presentation? Did we answer? You can take yourself off the mute and. Are they on? Let's see here. Well, I, I, I got my answers. Thanks. You got hers answered. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. They said I, how to find volunteers besides family members. There's uh, Hannah. We covered that. That yes, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Oh, did we answer hi. your questions? Yes, yes, you did. I just wanted to okay. say thank you. It's been incredibly helpful. Wonderful. So glad. Uh, Lenore, we said Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, your local churches, your local uh, BFWs, all auxiliaries, um, mm -hmm. schools. There are people that can help um, with your project. I believe we answered Harriet's, as I said, I'm sorry. Uh, Karen Lewis, fundraising suggestions, volunteer recruitment suggestions. Is Karen on? Karen Lewis. I don't think I see her. Yeah, I don't right. think Karen was able to join us. Okay. All right. Well, do anybody else have questions at all? And okay. we have just one more, which was Hannah Wallace. Can burial grounds clean up? Um, excuse me. Can burial ground cleanups be done by any age? I, I said we said yes, but they you got to make sure that the equipment that you're using is people of age. Uh, what is a sweet spot for some amount uh, for the amount of people? Um, I guess as many as they possibly you could possibly get to help you. Well, that's well, Krista. When I had mentioned yeah. about. For the people that, um, you know, depends on the size of the cemetery. You don't right. need 100 people for a small block. <laughs> Correct. But you might need 100 people for Eden Cemetery, you know? Right. <laughs> the cemetery that she is under, um, she says, 
is undetermined size, but would um, would say there will be a cleanup about 800 square feet. And she was looking forward to being here tonight. So I'm hoping we answered all you guys' questions. Okay. I think we got them all. I was going to say yes. not a question, but a suggestion. This is Samantha. So one of the things I put in here is that um, we found that storytelling helps um, when you're going out looking at different groups. So like where you said, you know, hey, we have uh, USCT or we have, you know, military, then mm -hmm. make sure those folks with the American Legion and things on that line know that um, educators, clergy, when you're targeting those groups, if you can find one or two people in your cemetery that was a part of that group, that seems to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you, Samantha, because that's exactly what I was saying about the Masonics. There's Masonic people buried there. People from the churches are buried there. So yes, um, I always try to make that connection. Talk about Rabdix and the Negro League baseball players. And then you got people coming in from all over because of the Phillies. A bit, you know, what is it? The, the Philadelphia Phillies? <laughs> I'm not a football or basketball person, but they would like to come and see those here. We're, we're going to have you stick to cemetery preservation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Stay there. <laughs> um, I keep trying, Samantha. Um, just, just looking at uh, again at the questions in the chat. Uh, I have to be. Uh, there's this one question. I just want to be sure that it was answered from Susan Anderson. Do we need a separate release or consent to post photographs of volunteers online? Well, you might want to get something if you feel that, uh, you know how we said about everybody take pictures and share them. If they're taking them and they're sharing them, they're already basically consenting to it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but you can tell them from the beginning that you're going to be taking pictures. And if you feel that they should not be seen, then let you, you know, that person in charge with their camera, but you don't know what other people are out there taking pictures of, you know, it could be another volunteer down the way, you know, around the other side of the trees that you don't see them taking a picture. So it's going to be kind of hard not to be in, you know, on somebody's iPhone or Galaxy so we, or whatever. On, on the Pennsylvania Hallowed Grounds website, under the, there's a link for preservation toolkit. Um, one of the things that we have on there is a sample waiver form. And one of the sections, there's actually a, a number of boxes that folks can check that lets them sort of acknowledge the different um, dangers and uh, potential issues with volunteering. And there is a separate opportunity for them to check off that they will, um, that they're going to be photographed and they allow their image to be used. So it's all actually on a single waiver form. So you don't have to do a separate one. Um, but then, you know, if you're doing a group photo, you want to make sure that people um, acknowledge that, you know, if you don't want to be in the photo, please step away. But it's hard when in this day and age when people are taking so many photos with their phones um, to always ensure that if somebody doesn't want to be photographed that they don't get caught in a photo. But I think asking is a is a good thing as part of the initial waiver um, signing process. Okay, well, um, I think we're at our very end. Um, Crystal? Thank you everyone for coming and taking the time and sharing with us. We hope that your cleanup day goes successfully uh, you do have our website, so just stop on by and see what's coming up, what's going to happen in the near future. Bertha, wrapping up. Yes, and, and again, thank you very much. And, and as uh, we've been saying throughout the presentation, there's quite a, quite a bit more information on our website uh, besides our information on how to clean up the cemetery. Just browse through and uh, it's, it's been very, very helpful. So we just wanna say thank you very much for joining us. Uh, look out uh, for information for the next Stewart's, Stewart's uh, round table, which will be coming up shortly. And then again, thank you again for all of your support and we're just gonna keep on moving on. 
Let us know if you're going to be uh, doing Earth Day in your area and send us information about it, where it's located and all that, so we can get it out there on our website. All right. All right, folks, have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.